to move it out to the 12. And think about who was in um, was, was hiding out in caves, right? Back in the old times when when uh, Saul was pursuing David, right? Um, and that. So um, these bats here would have been seen by Jesus, okay? Would have been seen by the wonderful characters that we know and love. Also, they have a really good little connection to the Ark of the Covenant. What is the Ark of the Covenant wood made out of? What kind of wood is it? It's called acacia wood. They're the sole pollinators of acacia trees. The Egyptian fruit bats. And they have another pole thing. They can echolocate because they have to live in caves because it's too hot to be out in the sun, like the other bat can. Um, and to us, but they also can see like an owl can see. So they have both, they're the only bat that has both capabilities. And they have that really strong physical protection uh, because of the uh, pollination they do. And the sea dispersal, they love to eat figs and they will drop the big seeds and grow new big plants all over the place by doing so. So they've got a really, um, a lot of things going on there that uh, kids that will see what's not going to come out much and get hungry. flying fox. Um, he is actually, when he puts his wing out, that's actually a, an arm and hand. He's got a thumb that's, a, that's free, and then four fingers that are the, the bone structure that support the wing. And then he's got an elbow, and he's got a shoulder blade. All of his uh, joints, everything is identical to a human arm. God used that same design for our human arm with the bats, with turtles, with moles, with a whale, and a spider monkey. Same common design of the arm, the way that the arm, uh, the joints, everything, the uh, finger length, the, the, all the joints, it's amazing. But anyway, but he's called a straw-colored flying fox. Hold it right here. Okay, and, oops, here, oh, thank you. And these guys make the largest snow migration in the world. They travel all over the continent of Africa to the Kisanka National Forest in Africa, in Tanz Tanz uh, Tanz I think it's in Tanzania, um, and, um, no, um, Zambia, I think. Anyway, they travel there every year, and they, um, it's their breeding ground, and millions and millions of them go there. And so uh, that's a pretty cool thing with them, too. So there's a lot of cool things with these animals. But they're, they're an amazing creature that they're a mammal, and they're the only mammal that can fly. And there are about 1,450 species of them. They're the second largest um, group of mammals in the world, so rodents and then bats. And actually, all, half of all uh, mammal-type animals are either bats or rodents. They make a path to male population as far as species are concerned, okay? So anyway, he's pretty cool. Don't bite any stuff. But he's uh, they're called flying foxes. You see a dog-like face on him. Okay, a dog-like face. Okay, you guys see it? Just don't reach out to him, he's a biter. The dog-like face he has. Yes? Yes? No, he's a pretty guy. He's a very pretty guy. Okay. Nice breeze. Nice breeze. Yep. Nice breeze. And then that golden color underneath his chin <laughs> that comes out about two years of age, but the females know to keep the male. So that's a, that's an unusual thing. And there are lots of cool things about bats. I could go on for a long time about bats. I could do that right now, but but they're a pretty amazing animal. There's so many different things about them. Um, oh, yeah. Huh. oh yeah, no, he's, he's spending the wrong way. So anyway, but yeah, he's a pretty cool animal though. I'll walk it down this way here. Any questions that you have so far about any of my animals that we've been showing you guys? Do you have any questions? Sure. Oh, armadillo, that one's from South America. But we have one that lives, one species that lives in North America. That's the nine-banded armadillo. Right, and that's when you don't want to have in captivity because they have about 20% of the population has leprosy. They, they, they got them from humans, and now they're back to humans, so that's one species they don't want to have in captivity, but the, the, uh, all the other species are, don't have that kind of thing going on. Plus, my animals, when I purchase them, I buy them from breeders, so they don't have any kind of that, yeah, zootropic type of diseases going, you know. Nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to be afraid of. It's a beautiful animal. It's a really, really beautiful animal. But you know, we, we're just bringing you a tiny smattering of the uh, creation that God has given us. Just a tiny little smattering. And you can see how beautiful these animals are that we've already shown you. Um, he has really given us an amazing world. And again, uh, he has given these animals in what we call, they call it the native abilities. 
Again, got programmed abilities, right? To do things, yes? So all bats can see. They all have eyes, they can see. Yeah, if they're, if they're um, uh, what we call the micro bats, which all, all we have in um, the Americans are micro bats, the mega bats really found the old world, all micro bats can see, but they have tiny eyes. And so when it comes to flying at nighttime, they're going to use that echolocation. They're going to send that sound out of either their mouth or their nose, depending on what kind of bat they are, and that's going to bounce off and uh, tell them where they are. And it's amazing what it can do for them. It tells them the texture of the object it bounces off of, the distance, um, and, um, and so they're able to, whether it's solid or moving or whatever, to take all kinds of information that comes back to them from that bounce, uh, that, that location call. And, and they can also catch flying insects that way too. All right, so it's a really amazing thing. They can communicate with it as well, they have location calls as well too. And every bat, this is an amazing thing too. We think about birds, every bird has its own unique song, right? So if you're sitting on your backyard, you know, you're listening to the bird, you can hear a carnival. If you not even see it, but know that it's a carnival because you're going to call, you it's a distinctive call. Or the, the, the mournful call of the um, mourn the, the, the dove, right? Um, so with the bats, every bat that echolocates has its own unique call too. They can record them and play them back, and they all have different sounds to that each species does. So that's a pretty amazing thing too, you know, uh, that they can do that. So. What are you over here, Debbie? Yep. It's a cute little face. Cute little face will find you cute there. Okay. All right. Our last animal that we're going to show you is the armadillo. Oh, sorry, the sloth. I'm sorry. <laughs> from his mother's arms. So we had people come on Facebook and attack us for that, and no, he was not. 
He was actually um, raised um, with his mother, but um, every day socialized with humans too. And when he was weaned at five weeks of age, he was then able to leave mom. Um, typically in the wild, they leave mom when they're a year old when mom has another baby. When she's pregnant and has another baby, she will abandon him. She'll just walk away from him, leaving him in the canopy and abandon him, which is fine because that's how they do it. They just, you know, and he's old enough then to take care of himself. They do have predators. They have some um, owl, um, owls and um, hawks in the rainforest area um, that will eat them, um, if, especially when they're little like this. Also jaguars, and they're very vulnerable when they go to the bathroom, so this is a kind of a cool thing too. Because they're all the way up in the rainforest canopy, really far, far, far up, and they are slow moving, right? They have to go down to the bottom of the rainforest, uh, the bottom of the tree to go to the bathroom. Well, if they had to go to the bathroom every day like we do, or several times a day like we do, that would be a problem for them, right? They only go to the bathroom every once a week, or every two weeks. For some, it's a month. They don't urinate or defecate, but that that one time, okay, every whatever. So the cool animal to take care of because they don't have mud mess to clean up. My other animals I'm sitting every day. I don't have to clean the mess up with them every day. So it's once a week right now for him. Um, and then uh, feeding wise, it's not that bad for him either. Um, it's easy to feed him and that too. Um, so anyway, but uh, he, I will show you him holding on here. It's just going to hold the towel itself. Are you holding on to it? You got your stomach up there. Okay. So his, so his feet are back on, he's relaxed, whoa, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry about that. Whoa, it looked like it was not a far there, are you okay? It's like it's taking a part of us, my goodness, ever get Oh my goodness, hey, 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 he's fine. They actually, they fall, they actually, they fall from the top of the kit, and, and then the mom has to retrieve them, so that's, don't like that to happen. I don't like that to happen. They have they can fall many, many times yeah. about the rainforest canopy. He's fine. He did not get hurt. The towel is part of him. And he looks like a branch with us, so I've got to get to him. Here he is, though. So, yeah, sorry about that. All right. Well, anyway, so their fur, right now, he's a baby. He's only six months old, he'll be seven months old in May. Um, but his fur is going to change as he gets older. He'll actually be so long that his hip will be here, this part will be here, and his head will be up here. So he'll be the length of my torso when he's full grown, big, really big. And, um, and his fur is going to change. So a really cool thing here about the fur, a really cool thing about the fur is this. <coughs> he's going to get this long, yeah, uh, golden blonde hair on his back. It'll be about six inches long and have a curl to it. But the really cool thing is when you look at a microscope at the fur, the hair, each hair, is going to have grooves in it. And those grooves allow for algae to grow in it, which is his camouflage. And then there are beetles and there are moths that will live in his fur and maintain that algae for him. That will keep it, you know, they'll eat it and keep it um, going. So he has that camouflage. So the symbiotic relationship with those insects and him as well in the rainforest canopy. Now, he's never going to have algae growing his, but if you look at those hairs, there's that groove around that, which is different than other animals have for their hair. So yeah, he'll have, he would have that. But some really cool things about them. But uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a cute little guy here. We really love him a lot. He's very bonded to us, um, and, and that might be some the most because he feeds them the most, but uh, he's a little awesome animal. So we're going to let you now um, come up and see the animals. If you want to see a certain one, we can uh, take out the animal and let you um, pet it or handle it. Uh, you can pet the uh, scum for sure on Dan's lap. If there's an adult that wants to hold it, you can too. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask the questions of us. But you can come on up and move around a little bit now. And if you want to see an animal, we can take it out. What? Oh, sure. Sure, OK. All right, if you should want to write a check, write it to the Incredible Bats, okay? If you would uh, like to do that. At this time, we're going to take a special offering for that. Uh, again, this is a ministry. They go from, they not only do park districts, but they do a lot of churches. And as you can see, they relate directly the animals to God's creation from the very beginning. And I appreciate that, guys, that you do that right up front. 
So at this time, uh, I'll pray, and if we can get the ushers to come forward, we'll take the special offering out. Uh, again, you know, we don't think twice about going to a movie or to, to you know, Don and I went to the baseball game last night. It's expensive, so please be generous with your giving. They just said they're buying new animals today, so uh, we can help them buy an animal. How's that? Uh,